Just before we get started with today's video, I do want to say that it's brought to you by Morning Brew. What is Morning Brew? It's a totally free daily newsletter that, just like a rich cup of coffee, is something you don't want to start your day without. It's a quick, well-organized look at both light and heavy news that you receive every day, Monday through Saturday. For me, Morning Brew is more like a midday brew because of the time difference with America, where I guess their primary audience is. But generally, instead of having it with a cup of coffee, I have it with my lunch, so it comes in around 12. 12.30ish, I'm having my lunch, I'm reading some Morning Brew. And the thing about it being like light and heavy, Morning Brew is nice. It's all very short. It's kind of like, uh, you know, not snippets, but text maybe this big, you'll see it on screen. And it's just an overview of what's going on. And there's also some headlines that they look at. And it's, you know, okay, so it might talk about war, but then it'll also talk about this interesting thing that happened in tech. And you're like, that's a nice balance. The sitting down to like read the newspaper is something that my parents did. I don't think people even do that anymore. Do newspapers still get sent out in circulation? I don't know. And then like other people look at social media for news, which is crazy. <laughs> like Facebook. <laughs> don't go there for your news. It just seems like allegedly most of that just seems to be made up. Uh, what was I looking at earlier today? I made some notes. Oh yeah, I'm recording this on April the 1st. And um, there was... There was an update on the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. Serious news. And then I also, I guess it's also serious news, but it's also like, (laughs) just, I don't know, quite entertaining. How Mark Zuckerberg basically had like a negative media plot. He was like plotting against TikTok and putting these stories out there, allegedly. And I'm like, Mark Zuckerberg, you are a cartoon villain. What's going on? This is bizarre. So yeah, if you like finance, current events, or tech, or you just want to keep up with some basic headlines, there's absolutely no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew. Like I said, it's totally free and it takes all of 10 seconds to sign up. And then you got the day's news right to your inbox. There is a link below. Get started with the drip. Easy. And uh, yeah, it's perfect. Just there's a link below. Sign up. It's free. Why not? You'll like it. And if you don't like it, you can just unsubscribe. It says it doesn't say that in the points. But if you don't like it, just unsubscribe. You've got nothing to lose from trying it out. I first subscribed to it when they first started sponsoring. It's got to be two years ago, and I've never unsubscribed. I get it every day, and I love it. Morning Brew, thank you. I'm going to finally finish with this ad read so we can have today's video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Decoding the Unknown. This one, I feel uh, with today's episode, we might be getting a bit close to conspiracy theories. I don't like conspiracy theories. I think they're, you know... (laughs) it's mostly just people i think i just don't like people who believe in conspiracy theories because they're always so like "Ah, you don't believe that this happens exactly like i say it to it did which the vast majority of people disagree with you're such a sheep you're just one of the crowd and it's just like oh okay whatever but it's just so like i don't know i don't like that um and i also think most conspiracy theories are baseless nonsense but there are of course some which have been proven to be true. So I don't discount all conspiracy theories immediately. I just don't like people who are too into conspiracy theories. Uh, We're talking about, is the moon even real today? Uh, But we're not really. We're mostly talking about absurd theories that people had about the moon, but was the moon even real? Is the moon even real? It's a a better title, isn't it? You probably clicked on it being like, oh, oh, here we go. Maybe the moon's not real. If you did think that, um, well, I I don't know what to say. That's not a very bright opinion, is it? Is it? Please don't tell me there's actually conspiracy theories about not believing. No, there definitely is because people believe the Earth is flat, which is insane. I thought people just believed that for the lulls, but then there was that Netflix documentary uh, against the curve, behind the curve, behind the curve. And it's like, no, 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 people do believe this. And I fell down a YouTube rabbit hole of people trying to explain why the Earth was flat. And I'm like, people must fall down this and get completely suckered in by it. And I was just like, you boys are talking some nonsense. Uh, let's just crack on with it, shall we? Thank you to Katie for writing this for me, as has probably become evident by now. I've not read it before. Uh, afterwards, Jen, our wonderful editor, will add in some memes. And some, uh, also, you know, some other editing stuff. Music. <laughs> Images that are relevant. That sort of nonsense. Sorry, Jen, I love it. Uh, what is the moon? 
is the Earth Earth's only natural satellite and was thought to have come about after something collided with the Earth several billion years ago. A constant presence in the night sky and sometimes visible by day, it's been a subject of veneration, celebration, and study by humans since forever. This episode is not going to talk about anything so contentious or well-trodden as the moon landings. Rather, we're going to take a look at some of the other weird beliefs and hoaxes that have revolved around the moon, so to speak. And get ready, because there are some absolute corkers today. The moon is made of cheese. It's like some Wallace and Gromit shit. Is Wallace and Gromit, did that cross the pond? I'm pretty sure it's British, because it seems like the most British thing ever. Um, but this was like a big deal. Is, Wall- is it Wallace and Gromit go to the moon or whatever? They build a rocket and they go to the moon. I know it's right there in the title. And it's made of cheese. It's made of Wensleydale. Wensleydale. I loved Wallace and Gromit as a kid. Did that cross the pond? Is that a thing you Americans know? If not, it should. It's really good. We now know that the moon is primarily made of rock. <laughs> it has an iron core, but at some point, you might have heard the expression that the moon is made of cheese or even green cheese. So, where did this come from? To anyone looking up at night, it's quite clear that the moon is not cheese. Cheese does not glow and would not ha- and would have to be a freaking large and dense ball of the dairy stuff to have survived this long if that's indeed what it is. Also, how are you going to it's dairy. It comes from like cows or milk, you know, it comes from the udders of animals. How did that get up in space? How did it get made there? Also, I don't think the glowing thing actually discounts this. Cuz if there was a giant like moon-sized bit of cheese like I assume frozen, just floating around in space. That's probably also going to reflect the sun. Because the moon doesn't glow, it just reflects. Right? Actually saying that, there is an incredibly hard cheese made in the Himalayas called Chirpy. So if the moon is made of cheese, I'm going to go with that one. Seriously, it's like chewing on a lump of wood. (laughs) That's not how I like my... I like hard cheese. Like some Parmesan, uh, other hard cheeses that I can't remember. But normally like grated or cut really thinly. There are several versions of a folktale floating around in which the moon is reflected in a pond or a lake and a gullible fool, human or animal, thinks or is told that it's a nice big cheese and should dive down to get it. (laughs) If you know anyone that stupid in your life, well, my my. The simpleton usually drowns in the attempt, spends their entire life trying to pick pick the reflection up or drinks the water to get the cheese and bursts. Weird. Folktales are weird. While it's hard to pin down the origins for folktales, it seems that one of the earliest recorded examples of this phrase came in the 16th century, courtesy of playwright John Haywood. He wrote a book of proverbs in 1546, which included a reference to the moon being made of green cheese as a way of saying someone was very gullible. I have included a short verse with the example in it, but Simon has made a passing mention of disliking ye olde English language. So sorry about that. Especially the third word. Oh god, here we go. No, I don't have any hints for how to pronounce it. Good luck. Okay, I'm just going to blindly go into this. Because oldie English, like 1546, I don't know if they're still doing these instead of U's at that point, or where that came from, but that's stupid. And uh, yeah, just like old school English is a nightmare. Here we go. Ye fetch circumquaquies to make me believe or think that the moon is made of green cheese. And when ye have made me a lout in all these, it seemeth ye would make me go to bed at no one. <laughs> is that supposed to rhyme? If it is, I've absolutely destroyed that last line. Uh, Jen, also, throw up on screen what the text looked like. Because I'm not going to like describe every weird spelling on there. Um, just a lot of extra letters. There are. Um, but if you're watching this in its video form, uh, have a look at the screen. <laughs> and uh, what is going on? <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Katie. Also a green cheese. I don't know if it was a good job, though. You're praising me. You didn't know how I did. I could. I did terribly, didn't I? Also a green cheese in these circumstances, or circumquaquies, refers to... <laughs> what is that word? Refers to a young cheese, or one that hasn't ripened yet, not that's actually green in color, which makes a much... Which makes sense, as the moon isn't green. Uh, Hayward also came up with, or at least recorded for the first time, many pithy epigrams and idioms that we still use today, such as out of sight, out of mind, the more the merrier, and the hitteth the nail on the... this hitteth the nail on the head. (laughs) You hit the nail on the head. This hitteth the nail on the head, old bean. (laughs) Old English. Although we have updated that last one a bit. I'm gonna... I'm I'm bringing it back, man. That hitteth the nail on the head, doesn't it just? 
Ah, uh, what, what? This moon cheese thing might not be top of our grab bag of insults anymore, but the literal idea of a big lump of space cheese persists this day with frequent cultural references to it in a myriad of cartoons and things like Wallace and Gromit's A Grand Day Out. Okay, so it wasn't called Rocketing to the Moon or a Moon Trip or whatever. It was called A Grand Day Out. And boy, was it grand. They went to the moon. Even NASA got in on the joke, although it took them until 2002 to think of it. Stupid, slow NASA. An image credited to their Ranger 9 spacecraft was photoshopped so that you could see an expiration date printed inside one of the moon's craters, which was April the 1st, 2002. On their astronomy picture of the day site, it then added underneath, Controversy still exists, however, over whether the date resolved is truly an expiration date or just a sell-by date. To be cautious, we should probably devour the moon by tomorrow. A spokesperson advised, Well played, NASA. Well played. <laughs> NASA's the king of dad jokes. And I also think, like, people are so stupid that they'll be like, Yeah, well, uh, I think NASA posted that by accident. Uh, and it actually does mean that they found this expiration date on there. And so it is made of cheese. Or maybe that it just proves that the moon was fake and made. It's an artificial construct because the Earth is flat. Um... Yeah, this is the risk of being NASA. I feel like you could post something like that and people will be like, take it literally. Even though it's literally April Fool's Day. You idiots. The many inhabitants of the moon. What lives on the moon? Tardigrades, potentially, although scientists now say that they probably didn't survive a crash landing on the moon in 2019. So, what else do we know of that lives there? Wait, did people really crash like a space probe or whatever with tardigrades on them into the moon? That's crazy. I mean, I thought people weren't people generally against the idea of putting stuff like bacteria and stuff on the moon because it would. I mean, I don't really think the moon's going to be developing life anytime soon. But isn't the point of like, I thought, you know, when we go to Mars and stuff, they sterilize everything because they don't want to contaminate Mars with bacteria because then they'll be like, oh my God, we found bacteria. And it's like, oh no, they just came here on Pathfinder. And now we don't know if any of the life that we find on Mars is actually from Mars. I felt like that was quite an important thing, although I'm fairly. I'm fairly confident scientists have decided that there's no life on, on, on the moon. It is sterile. So what else do we know lives there? The man on the moon, that boy with the fishing rod from the DreamWorks logo, some bipedal beavers? Yes, this is an example of something that people actually believed in the 19th century, that there were, amongst other things, beavers and bat people living on the moon. <laughs> but <laughs> just like beavers, why? But even before that, there was superstition that things lived on the rocky satellite. After the invention of telescopes that meant people could see mo the moon in greater detail, imagination started to run wild. Yeah, boy. Beavers! In, 19 in 1638, a book by Bishop John Wilkins was published called The Discovery of a World in the Moon, which sounds like he actually discovered something, but the subtlety goes on. But the subtitle goes on to say, a discourse tending to prove that tis pro probable that there may be another habitable world to that planet. That's a hell of a subtitle, Jono. Oh, okay, John, so this is just a theory. And by the way, the moon isn't even a planet. Uh. <laughs> also, is that like, is that the 15th century equivalent of clickbait? There's life on the moon. And then the video starts with saying there might be life on the moon according to this theory that I've come up with and is uh, not based on fact. <laughs> this dude's the king of 15th century clickbait. Moving on, in 1835, the ironically named New York Sun newspaper published a series of articles detailing the findings of renowned astronomer John Herschel. John Herschel was the son of William Herschel, also a famed astronomer, who discovered the planet Uranus. <laughs> I can't help myself. Amongst many other things, and he also had a theory that the moon might be populated. This theory was not one of his correct ones. <laughs> anyway, going back to John Herschel, the New York Sun declared to the world via a Dr. Andrew Grant, who was a research assi assistant of Herschel's, that Herschel had made incredible observations of the moon and uh, from his time spent researching on the Cape of Good Hope. And boy, did Herschel have some good telescope. In fact, according to the original article, it was calculated to have a magnifying power of 42,000 times. I got a bit confused trying to compare it with modern day telescopes as they're absolutely massive and can use more than one lens, so the magnification is calculated per inch of aperture. Um, that's confused me. Katie's explanation of a complicated, si uh, uh, of a complicated science thing. In simple words, I'm also like, what? Inch of aperture? I know what an aperture is. I don't want inches, but okay. I think we can safely say that it was way better than other telescopes in 1835, though. Here are some things he apparently saw through it and were later published in the paper under the headline Great Astronomical Discover Ast Ast 
great astronomical discoveries lately made by Sir John Herschel. As well as finding areas of the moon that were lush valleys filled with colorful trees, Herschel also quickly spotted various life forms. The first was similar to a small earth bison, but had a remarkably fleshy appendage over the eyes, crossing the whole breadth of the forehead and united to the ears. This could be lifted and lowered. And Herschel came to the conclusion that the animals could use it as a sort of visor to protect their eyes from the light. <laughs> Mate, what's the situation going to be? You publish this piece of research, people are going to be like, dude, that is unbelievable. I mean, it's literally unbelievable. Let me have a look through your telescope. And John O's like, nah, it burned down. My, uh, it's on the Cape of Good Hope and it burned down in a big fire. And I couldn't build another one because I lost my drawings. And uh, you just have to take my word for it that there are weird fleshy animals on the moon. John. Uh, people believe this? The next animal discovered was a kind of unicorn goat mix. Described as a bluish lead color about the size of a goat with a head and beard like him and a single horn slightly inclined forward from the perpendicular. Many other birds and animals are discovered over the course of the six-article run, including miniature zebras, a long-necked sheep with two horns, and the beaver that we mentioned at the start. John, when did they invent LSD? Because what are you taking? The description given is, The last resembles the beaver of the earth in every other respect than in its destination, than its destitution of a tail and its inevitable habit of walking upon only two feet. It carries its young in its arms like a human being and moves with an easy gliding motion. Unsurprisingly, the public was eating this up. I wish, I mean, I wish the public were a bit more skeptical. They'd be like, yo, got any pictures? Can we have a look through the telescope? Did anyone else see this who is not profiting from this somehow? Anybody, any impartial observer. Circulation of the New York Sun boomed and it became the most widely read newspaper in the world, which according to the JSTOR website meant it had a circulation of a whopping 19,360 copies. This was 1835, remember. The articles were scientific in nature, beginning with a long and dry description of how the telescope was designed, etc. So it's quite surprising that people even read enough to get to the blue uniform, unicorn goat parts. Yeah. Although, generally, you'd get it recommended to you. You'd be like, yo, 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 have you read that article? It starts off about a boring telescope. But just stick with it, because it turns out there's goats and beavers, colorful versions of them, on the moon. Just stick with it, mate. You'll love it. Herschel is constantly named in the articles, and supposed direct quotes from him are printed, giving it more a sh more than a sheen of credibility, even though in reality he didn't have anything to do with it. Oh no, his assistant's just making all this up to sell like a story to a newspaper, isn't he? And everyone's buying it. That's depressing, a newspaper should do more due diligence than that. The articles were accompanied by vivid illustrations of the landscape and creatures found, again naming Herschel, who was very well known at this point in time, and adding fuel to the fire of the public's imagination. The stars of the show, though, turned out to be the bad people. They were found near a lake, which, according to the article, displays scenery on both sides, picturesque and romantic, beyond the powers of prose description. These bad beings, averaged four feet in height, were covered except on the face with short and glossy copper-colored hair, and had wings composed of a thin membrane without hair lying snugly upon their backs from the top of their shoulders to the calves of their legs. The article then goes on to describe their social interactions and fruit-eating activities in some detail. The New York Sun never admitted that this was anything other than a series of scientific articles. However, it was a tabloid star paper at the time and the whole affair has since become known as the Great Moon hoax. Herschel himself reportedly found the whole thing funny at first, saying he wished his discoveries could be that interesting. But as time went on, he got pretty fed up with it as people were asked, kept asking him whether it was true or not. The supposed author of the articles, Dr. Andrew Grant, was not real and was actually a cover of one of the paper's own writers, Richard Locke. No, you didn't, New York Sun. You just made, you just had one of your in-house writers just make some shit up like a fiction story? That's wild. And desperately unethical. He said the whole thing was meant to be satirical, but that's not how it was received by the public at the time. He must have been pretty disappointed when they eventually found out that the whole thing was a big joke. Or maybe they didn't find out in their lifetimes, as in the early 19th century, many people and scientists were often not, were often very open to believing that there were full-on societies on other planets, so they died believing in blue unicorns living in the Rainbow Valley on the moon. <laughs> it's got to kind of be comforting to be like, yeah, yeah, it's full of life up there. Maybe they're not destroying the planet as badly as we are. And then someone's like, dude, it's just barren. And if there were people up there, they'd probably be f***ing it up as well, wouldn't they? We'd just go there and ruin that as well. Leave all our s*** 
up there mine the iron from its core and build ugly buildings brilliant work humans the nazi moon base what happens to hitler and his wife eva braun when they realized the writing was on the wall in april 1945 well he killed her and then he killed himself didn't he <laughs> next entry uh contrary to popular belief they did not kill themselves by gunshot and cyanide respectively uh they instead hopped into a spaceship and flew off to an established bunker on the moon which the germans had been using since at least 1942 what's that movie uh about the nazis in that big moon but iron sky that is a weird movie i'm not sure how i discovered that or ended up watching that but i was like what am i watching <laughs> soviet troops closing in on a german rocket base towards the end of the war apparently witnessed several huge rockets lifting off they were much larger than the normal v2 ballistic rocket and traces of them were never found again leaving generals to ponder what or who might have been aboard while the idea of hitler hot footing it to the moon or nazis having some sort of base up there seems laughable the germans were probably capable of at the time creating a rocket that could make it to space in fact <laughs> guys there's a big difference between getting a rocket into space and having a base a habitable base on the moon in fact a test firing of a v2 rocket did make it over the nasa defined start of space line in 1942 which is 50 miles or 80.5 kilometers above sea level this is lower than other imaginary space boundaries but nasa is quite well known so i thought this probably counted the nazis were more interested in perfecting their rockets as weapons at the time though so weren't particularly bothered about space exploration the moon base idea has stuck around in popular culture with video games especially making use of the nazis on the moon trope in 2012 a movie spin-off video game and board game called iron sky movie spin-off video game. so it spun off from a video game which is probably why it was so weird currently at 5.9 on imdb which is below my voluntary wash threshold of 6.7 that's good that's a good idea having a i don't watch below this rating right unless you got a recommendation from someone or something because you know yeah yeah that would be a good filter it's apparently a tongue-in-cheek movie about nazis who have been living on the dark side of the moon since 1945 and now want to reinvade earth that's what it's about here's a quote from leslie felperin who reviewed the film for variety ultimately iron sky is neither good enough to rep a proper breakout hit nor bad enough that it might attain cult status it's just kind of lame the worst of all possible worlds ouch it did spawn a sequel in 2019 so it can't have done that badly yeah also i ended up seeing this somehow i don't think i saw it in the movies was it on netflix or some as fantastic as silly and as silly as all this sounds though there really are nazis on the moon wait what explain please okay is what i mean there are lunar craters named after Werner von braun and kurt h debus both of whom were card carrying nazi party and ss members before jumping ship to work in america work in america after the end of the second world war von braun of course was the man one of the main developers of the germans v2 rocket and later worked on the saturn V rocket that led the usa to land on the moon debus was a weapons flight test director for the nazis and then worked with von braun again on other u.s rocket projects he also ended up becoming the first director of the kennedy space center when it was set up in 1963. sure they said afterwards that they had to join the parties as it would be dangerous not to and they didn't believe in hitler's ideologies blah 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 but well of course you're going to play down your involvement in one of the most contentious political parties of all time when the opportunity of a clean slate and a well-paid dream job comes your way yeah operation paperclip was pretty intense it's like where Werner von braun and all the other nazis were like yeah yeah, yeah you've got skills all right we're gonna need you to do some work for us in exchange we'll just pick out all the atrocities okay okay i mean it's really complicated morally many other former nazi engineers and scientists were brought over to the u.s under a secret mission called operation paperclip to give the u.s a boost against the soviets in the space race and the cold war yeah i mean the soviet union did the same thing i made a video about the uh oh no i wanted to make a video but there was so little information available about it that we'd ended up not doing it a video about uh, the soviet equivalent of operation Babyclip and then taking nazi scientists to work on soviet space projects but there just wasn't enough i guess english language information or just historical information because of the soviet union a little bit hush hush wasn't it so yeah while there might not be a secret nazi military base on the moon lots of former nazi party members were highly instrumental in developing many aspects of current space technology the hollow moon have you heard of the hollow earth theory unfortunately yes the idea has been floating around for hundreds of years and posits that the earth is actually hollow and there's basically a whole other land in there 
This is represented in the world of entertainment all the time, with things like Jules Verne's Journey to the Center of the Earth from, 1980, uh, from 1864, all the way up to Godzilla vs. King Kong in 2021. <laughs> Godzilla vs. Kong was a thing? Never heard of that, and it was released last year. Jesus, how did that happen? Anyway, imagine that sort of thing, but for the moon. Alright, I can see why people might have thought it was hollow in the dim and distant past, or that, you know, there were blue goats on it, or whatever, but this theory persisted well into the 20th century, and probably is still around now. But why would anyone think that the moon was hollow anyway? In 1969, the Apollo 12 space mission deliberately crashed part of the rocket that was no longer necessary into the moon to measure seismic effects. The information was picked up by seismometers that were actually installed on the moon, and the results were beamed back to NASA. NASA reported at one point that the moon rang like a bell for almost an hour after the collision. <laughs> Wait, do people think that it has to be hollow? Don't tell me that people just thought because it rang like a bell, because that's what they said, that they're like, well, bells are hollow. Sort of, in a way. Um, so yeah, the moon's hollow. That's not what they meant. Uh, this led people, although not everyone at NASA presumably, to believe that the moon was therefore hollow to produce such an effect, or at least have large hollow pockets in its interior. It's since been shown in various experiments that as the moon is less dense than the Earth, and because of its physical makeup, quakes on the moon just create different effects than those on our planet. There is no real evidence pointing to a big space or spaces in the middle of the moon, and really, if we find out in the future that it is hollow, so what? Scientists can just use that information to work out other things about space and planet formations. It would hardly be a black eye for the science world more of an unexpected revelation i think that's it it's like yo seeing as we know stuff about other planets and about the earth none of them are hollow densely packed with all sorts of stuff i feel like that's the the, the assumption we should make about the moon that it is in fact solid and if they prove otherwise they be like okay it's hollow Anyway, that's my armchair take on it. Not having nailed my scientific credentials to the mast of the moon has to be solid, and anyone who thinks otherwise is a complete idiot. I suppose NASA will be accused of lying to the world, but they can just say they were going with the best information they had at the time and are now excited by this new finding. Well, that's what I would say anyway. Yeah, that's what scientists say. Because scientists are like, okay, let's assume this. And then evidence comes along, and they're like, okay, well, that assumption was wrong or right, wasn't it? And now we'll adjust our opinions accordingly, rather than being like, no, no, no. It's hollow. It's like, yeah, but we've just proved that it's solid. No, it's hollow. That's what conspiracy theory people do. Moving on, as we have not drilled down to the center of the moon or taken an x-ray at the whole thing, we can't say for sure whether it's hollow or not. But as the general scientific consensus seems to be that it isn't, the whole hollow moon theory seems a bit weird and also a bit pointless. But where most people see a totally pointless fringe theory, others smell a bit of a cover-up. The hollow moon theory is also known as the spaceship moon theory, which goes off on a tangent that the moon is hollow because of aliens, or that there's an alien spacecraft hidden inside it, or that the moon itself is an alien spacecraft. I mean, no, it's not. I mean, unless it's proved to be, uh, but I'm just going to lead with the assumption that it's not an alien spacecraft, because aliens aren't, you know, we don't we don't think they've been here, like most reasonable people. Uh, and the moon is just an astral body. It's just floating around out there, right? And until we, there's no evidence to say it's a spaceship, so why should we assume that? According to some Russian scientists, Michael Vassin and Alexander Shcherbakov, there is no way that the moon's craters are natural. If the bigger craters were made by large meteors, they would be a lot deeper and not have such flat bottoms. Therefore, the rocks must be hitting some sort of armored plating just under the moon's surface, and, and therefore, it's a spaceship created by aliens. Woohoo! Conspiracy theories are high! It would be amazing if we did find this to be true. Although, if the spacecraft ever took off, it would probably wreak havoc on our planet, as it would all be underwater in a matter of minutes, so let's hope that doesn't happen. The spaceship moon hypothesis dies into the last wild idea, which is that the moon is a hologram. Oh, is this going to be the flat earth people saying that the moon It's like, yeah, it's projected into the sky by NASA. Guys, can you just smoke less crack or something because this is wild. I mean, I'll keep smoking the crack because I love having stuff to talk about on the show. You know the moon, right? The white shiny thing in the sky that waxes and wanes, it affects the planet's oceans, and that multiple people have actually set foot on? Yes, that moon isn't real, it's a hologram. We're living in a hologram, everything is one big hologram. Oh, okay. Please unwrap a new tin uh, roll of tinfoil, because you're going to be making many, many hats for this one. 
I'm talking David Icke territory here. Uh-oh. David Icke is like the biggest crackpot of crackpots. He believes all sorts of crazy sh**. First off, why would people think that the moon is a hologram or anything other than a big lump of rock floating about in space? Backyard astronomers have apparently witnessed glitches in the appearance of the moon or decided that it's actually transparent, which in no way can be related, related to issues with their equipment or their existing beliefs. I'm being sarcastic, in case you didn't realize. Oh no. Oh no, I realized. Do you want me to read it more sarcastic? Which can in no way be attributed to issues with their equipment or their existing beliefs. In no way. Was that sarcastic enough for you? I found other people saying things like the US government is projecting a hologram of the moon to cover up for the fact that they spent so much money on the purported Apollo missions but were really using it for other top secret things and the moon never existed in the first place. I've seen theories that the moon is real but hologram is being projected to hide up what's really go hide what's really going on on there. Like Nazi military bases being built, alien do aliens doing things that us poor sheep aren't supposed to know about. I don't know, that kind of nonsense. The people who believe that Earth is flat have differing opinions on the moon, including that it is flat, that it's tiny, and that it's fake, so at least they have options to fall back on if they ever realize that the Earth is actually round. So, what does former Coventry goalkeeper <laughs> I don't know exactly who this is David Icke, the man who has scientific opinions about stuff, was a goalkeeper for a football club. That is his background. A sportsman. A goalkeeper in football yes uh what does david ike have to say about these moonly matters the granddaddy of conspiracy theories actually had two theories about the moon both of which just occurred to him one day you know as they do so instead of i don't know doing some actual research or discussing with astronomers or maybe seeing a psychiatrist david he just plops them into books therefore this validated them as real to whoever reads and believes his stuff his original theory was that the moon is an alien vessel and is sending false realities directly to our brains he then expanded on this in another book which went on to say that the moon is an artificial construct amplifying a signal from saturn's ring set up by his favorite lizard people this is drifting so far into insanity when you start combining all your crazy conspiracy theories together it doesn't make it more believable it just makes it sound so insane david and anyone else who does this which projects a false hologram onto the earth and we're blindly living inside it to which i say big whoop i'm having an all right time down here and if i have to one day get pulled out of a pod matrix style and have to fend for myself in the real world i probably wouldn't last very long although i'd at least get an artfully ripped fisherman's jumper and some pretty cool boots <laughs> <laughs> the matrix if the aliens are running this planet for their own amusement my little sim is doing just fine as long as books coffee and netflix exist <laughs> i was just thinking about this the other day there's like all this talk like uh, i was listening to this podcast the h3 podcast and they were like reacting to these guys who were all like um what's it called like there's the people they're like oh man don't be blue pill you gotta be red pill alpha male and i'm like yo if I was in the Matrix, so I, it, it comes back to that blue pill, red pill, like Morpheus giving Neo the choice, right? Do you want to wake up? And I'd be like, F no, man, give me that blue pill. If I knew what that red pill was, I'd be like, no, 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 no. I want to stay in my slime container and be able to eat steak like the bad guy. That looked awesome. He's, at a, he's having steak and smoking a cigar. That's how you want to live. That's how you want to live. Not like fighting robots. Okay, so they harvest my energy. It's not painful. It sounds fine, to be honest. I'm fully blue pill. <laughs> uh, don't ruin life for me, Mr. Ike. On a side note, looking at his website, which is davidike.com, which I genuinely read as Davy Dicky. <laughs> Which is kind of unfortunate for him, but I suppose it's a bit late to change the name of the brand now. That reminds me of that old uh, website, Pencil Land. <laughs> Pencilland.com. Also read as Penis Pencil Land. Yeah, also, no, no, no. Oh, I'm so stupid. I just totally ruined the joke. It's Pen Island. Penisland.com for all of your pen needs. But it's all that, uh, that also spells penis land. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's like that time my friend was like, dude, you got to check out this great website, meatspin.com. And I was like, dude, why? Why? Don't go there. I don't know if it still exists. It's been a good 20 years since that, that old chestnut was around. <laughs> so rather than being a hologram itself the moon is actually a hologram projector if it is wow it's doing a great job i suppose i'm just falling for the cover-up but i've been led to believe that holograms genuinely generally look a bit 
Project. Currently, I'm inside a projected house on a projected chair, typing on a projected laptop that's resting on a projected table, and it all looks really real and solid and everything. I'd be like, that's some holodeck level projections, guys. And that's just me. There are several billion other people out there blithely doing things with projections. 99.9% .9 of which are totally pointless in the grand scheme of things. It's a bit depressing, isn't it? Isn't everything a bit pointless in the grand scheme of things? What's that called? There's a word for that. Uh, nihilism. Nihilism? Nihilism? Where it's like, everything's pointless. Everything is pointless. I mean, I kind of understand it. It's really depressing, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, ultimately, isn't it just? It all is, really, because... Ultimately, the universe is going to end, and we're all just going to be a bunch of dust compressed into nothingness, or however the universe ends. And I mean, that's in like billions of years. And your whole life is just a tiny fraction of that that no one's ever going to care about. Even if you're like Alexander the Great, Napoleon, people we think of as being like mad historical famous figures. None of that's going to be around in like, maybe, I don't know, 10,000 years? Are we going to remember Napoleon? Probably not. Which is crazy. And uh, nihilism, everybody. Isn't that fun? I'm sad too. There's a lot of work going into keeping the human race under the impression that things are as they seem. And to what ends? According to Ike, it's to stop us from realizing our full potential, in which case I guess we'd overthrow the aliens and take over the universe for ourselves. But even if that happens, I'm still just going to be one of the normal people chugging along somewhere in the middle. Ike makes many references to the Matrix films in his statements, which makes you wonder if he was maybe influenced by them in his later years. If he was, I hope he didn't watch the newest one, because it's kind of hard to keep a handle on. <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to seeing that, though. Okay, uh, we're going to start by stating for the record that you're not going to like this. So, is the moon hollow, an alien ship, a dragon egg, like in an episode of Doctor Who? I have no idea what that reference is. I've only seen, like, I saw Doctor Who when it was, like, black and white back in the day. Unless that was another show. But Doctor Who was black and white, right? I remember watching my old nan, my nan's TV. Or maybe her TV was black and white. As usual, the most mundane answer is usually the correct one. But since when has that stopped us humans making up our own wacky ideas? Let's end with a quotation by Chinese-American Taoist Deng Ming Dao. The moon does not fight. It attacks no one. It does not worry. It does not try to crush others. It keeps to its course. But by its very nature, it gently influences. What other body could pull an entire ocean from shore to shore? The moon is faithful to its nature, and its power is never diminished. Not bad for a hologram. Ah! This has been an episode of Decoding the Unknown. We decoded absolutely nothing today. No one entered this video, at least I pray, thinking that the moon, believing any of these conspiracies, believing that the moon wasn't real. Please don't believe that. It's obviously false. Uh, also, you know, David Icke, not the place to go to for facts, really, is it? Uh, this says, in my opinion, allegedly. This, this has been an episode of, I said this already. Thank you so much for watching or listening. If you're watching, like, subscribe. If you're listening, uh, a review would be fantastic. Thank you so much. And make sure you're subscribed. And I'll see you next time.